In 1991, a man named Gregory Green stabbed his wife, Tanya, in the chest and face. She was six months pregnant. Then he called 911 and waited for the police to come while she and the baby inside her bled to death. He did all this at the age of 25. However, when he was caught, Green pleaded an insanity defense in that case and was ordered for mental examination. But no mental deficiencies were found and Green's parole requests were denied four times, twice in 2004 and twice more than two years later. Now, what could have possibly made someone turn on their own pregnant wife and unborn child? Well, Green could never explain why he actually did what he did or why he turned himself into the authorities. Considering this backstory, Green's behavior in prison verged on the unbelievable. And I say unbelievable because, interestingly enough, the only incident he got in trouble for was a fistfight over a television. I mean, other than that, there were no signs of the brutal violence he had shown to those closest to him, meaning his wife and unborn child. Records show that his history during the time of imprisonment was pretty clean. They showed a man who followed the rules and stayed out of trouble. No aggression, no violent outbursts. Green was respectful to the staff and other inmates. There weren't even reports of minor behavioral problems. And apparently, Green even had plans for finding work after leaving jail and completed educational programs in prison. So it would seem that he was a completely changed man and left his past behind. Unfortunately though, Green's story doesn't end there, because although his prison record was clean, his past actions were far from it. And whatever violent tendencies he managed to control in jail were soon to resurface. It had been 16 years since murdering his first family, and Green had managed to be granted parole. Aside from his unbelievably good behavior, there were other factors that helped him get released. Family and friends, including a pastor and civil rights activist called Harris, fought for him to be free. And the pastor, Harris, had previously been friends with Green and shockingly described his past murder as a simple, and I quote, mishap. In 2005, Harris wrote to the Michigan Parole Board saying, and I quote, I feel he has paid for his unfortunate lack of self-control, but only time would tell if that were really true. Because once released in 2008, Green went on to marry Harris's daughter, Faith, who already had two children of her own. Green's past actions had somehow been forgiven and forgotten by both Faith and her father, the pastor. I know, it's pretty wild. Gregory, however, and his newfound wife, Faith, went on to have two children together, Coy and Kalei. And you know, Green may have temporarily patched himself up, but sure enough, the cracks were evidently starting to show. Because in 2013, Green's wife, Faith, was refused personal protection orders against Green by a judge. And you may be wondering why she would even try to file for protection orders against Green himself, her husband that she, you know, married out of love, right? Well, it's because police had reportedly been called to their home many times over serious claims of violence disputes. But you know, who could have seen this coming, you know? Marrying a legitimate murderer who murdered his first wife and unborn child. Wow, I I'm actually shocked. In any case, in 2016, Faith decided to file for a divorce against Gregory Green. And nobody really knows what went through Green's head as his marriage was on the brink of collapsing, but we do know that the impact was devastating for him. Because as soon as he found out that his second wife was about to divorce him, he turned his back to what he had learned in jail all those years ago and decided to pursue revenge against his wife because... On the 21st of September, 2016, in the early hours of the morning, Faith found herself unable to move. She was in the basement of their home in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Her face had been slashed with a box cutter and her foot had been shot. Duct tape and zip ties restricted her movement, keeping her from her two teenage children who had been shot multiple times in the same room as her. But killing his 17 and 19 year old stepchildren and torturing his wife was only one part of the atrocity because even Green's own biological daughters of which he had with his wife hadn't been spared by their father. Investigators who were on this case found a tangle of plastic tubing with duct tape around it on the car's muffler. This device had been rigged to release deadly carbon monoxide fumes while Koi, aged 5, and Kalei, aged 4, were inside, according to prosecutors at court. The little girls were said to have been asleep during the whole ordeal and therefore died in their sleep. Or at least that's what their mother hoped happened. 
The bodies of the two young sisters found later in the family home had officially died from inhaling the toxic fumes before being moved inside by their father, and after this, he went on to complete his gruesome plan by shooting his wife and stepchildren. As in 1991, when he killed his first wife and child, Green called 911 and waited outside the house. When officers arrived, he told them he'd shot his family inside the house. Neighbors such as Michelle Carson witnessed the arrest without fully understanding what had happened. She described this as completely eerie and everything was quiet as Green turned himself in. However, the conviction of Green was painful and disturbing for all involved. His crimes were the worst that veteran law enforcement officers claimed to have dealt with in all their careers. Fortunately though, his wife, Faith, appeared in court in a wheelchair as she survived the entire incident. Green pleaded utterly guilty and confessed to everything he had done, at times through tears. Yes, this guy was actually crying. And interestingly enough, while shopping at a Home Depot a week before, Green planned the murders of his two youngest daughters. According to info gathered from this case, the piping he bought there would allow him to alter the exhaust system in order to poison them with carbon monoxide when they were inside his car. All of this was explained by the assistant prosecutor. And I know some of you may be confused as to what that may look like, but just imagine getting a long piece of pipe and connecting it to the exhaust of a car, and then routing that pipe up and over the trunk and then putting it inside the back window, rolling up the windows and then sealing up any part of the windows that may let fresh air inside. I know it sounds like a pretty brutal way to go out, but based on what I've been able to gather online, carbon monoxide overdoses or poison are typically painless as it knocks you out and renders you unconscious. In any case, Faith Harris's doctor told her she has short-term memory loss about some details surrounding the slaughter of her children. Unsurprisingly though, she suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder and nightmares as she explained in court. Upon realizing the nightmarish reality that all four of her children were gone, Faith simply stated, and I quote, some days I wish I had just died. But through being strong enough, she managed to say all this in court in front of her torturer and ex-husband, Gregory Green. She also said that justice will only be served when her ex-husband burns in hell for his awful crimes. She also stated that not even torture and death would bring her peace, something expressed by many people who have lost loved ones to violence. However, Faith was not the only one to express sorrow. Green, the husband, and the murderer wept while describing the murders of his biological children and stepchildren. He claimed that not a day goes by where he doesn't think about his girls, making it sound as if he were the victim. And when talking about the murder of his innocent children, the attorney stated that Green just, and I quote, wanted to get it over with. Green pleaded guilty to a mass of crimes, first degree murder, second degree murder, torture and assault, and a felony for firearms. Despite all this though, Green still can't come up with a reasonable explanation, or any clear explanation for that matter, as to why he killed his four children. Nothing flagged up in his psychiatric tests and evaluations, and in fact, he was found completely mentally competent. And Faith Harris told the court it was all because he was, and I quote, insecure. You know, all this just makes his actions more horrifying because he legitimately had a no definitive answer as to why he killed his own children. Like, Faith Harris called Green a devil in disguise and a monster in front of the whole court during his trial. She also added that he was a con artist, alluding to him somehow disguising his true personality from her. Regardless of his motive though, the loss of life from these very young children is something that can never be brought back. Faith Harris's four children were laid to rest on Friday after the the hearing and this was at their family church more than 1000 people attended the service and with all her injuries showing faith needed assistance from family to even just sit down chadney allen sir was also present to say goodbye to his two children who had been slaughtered by their stepfather gregory green at the age of 50 though green was put in jail for a second time for crimes worse than his first judge hathaway who dealt with green's case told him his crimes were by far the worst she had ever dealt with he was also told by hathaway that his actions as a father were inconceivable. Therefore, Green is now serving a sentence of 40 to 100 years in prison. So basically, he will be spending the rest of his life in jail. I mean, I can say moral of the story is that although some people may be able to change after murdering innocent people in cold blood for the first time, going to prison and serving their time, being good in prison and then coming back out, for other people, that just does not work. Some people are permanently tainted and can never come back from the crimes of which they originally committed.
in any case let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section i want to know your thoughts and opinions about this i think that this is an obvious one that people should have seen coming i mean the guy literally killed his first wife and unborn child in 1991 people who do that typically will never come back from that. I just fail to see why anybody forgave him for that. It just seemed like an incredibly risky gamble. And in the end, you know, he ended up doing what he originally did over 20 years ago. You live, you learn, I guess, though. With that being said, though, you guys already know who it is. Thank you for watching. And until next time, stay safe out there.